I recently released a pattern for a Texas flag baby blanket, this one here, and it's done in Tunisian crochet, which is also called the Afghan stitch or Afghan crochet. And this is a technique that my family has used for generations, calling it the Afghan stitch, but it's still pretty new, I think, to modern young crafters, and so I want to show you how this is done. It's really easy. Crochet goes really pretty quickly, and uh, the, the stitch that it creates is, is nice and square and just begging for cross-stitch embroidery like I've done the, the Lone Star here on the Texas state flag. So I'll show you how to work this stitch. To do Tunisian crochet, you'll need a super long crochet hook with a stopper on the end. You might have seen these in craft stores and wondered what they're for. And I'm using a really especially huge one here. Um, they're usually about this long and sometimes they have a soft cord on the end. This one just happens to be really thick. I can think it's size N. Yeah, that's, that's pretty big. And even if you've never crocheted before, this is really pretty easy. So let me show you how this goes. The first thing you start with is a crochet chain, like I have here. And when you look at a crochet chain, if you're a knitter, um, you'll recognize that it looks like a bind off row or a cast on row, with, uh, or a bind off row, um, with V's, like that, this being the top side. We are going to start working from the bottom, the underside of the crochet chain. And you'll see that there are these horizontal stitches running through the center of the chain which I've heard called the spine of the crochet chain. <clears throat> and to get going with this, you put your hook into the first spine there, yarn over and pull it through that spine. I need to tighten things up here, there we go. Into the next spine, pull it through. You are doing something you don't do in normal crochet, which is to collect, hook, collect loops on the hook. Normally, crochet, you're only, when you finish a stitch, you're left with just one loop on the hook. The foundation row is always kind of slow. Working into the chain is slow. Okay, there I have a bunch of loops on here. And the first stitch, uh, that was the first pass. Now the second pass, we're going to go the other direction. And the first stitch on the, on the second pass, you loop over and pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, and then it's two all the way across. You can see how this ends up going pretty quickly. Okay, we've finished one row back and forth here. Now to go back the other way, you take a look at the work that you have and you'll see there are these vertical lines running through the work here. That's what you're going to pick up on the third pass working to the left. You put your hook, it's really easy, it goes quickly because this is an easy thing to pick up. You go into that vertical loop Pull up a loop in there, pull up a loop. Okay, and on the last one, there isn't a, well, you can see the vertical line here. You don't want to just pick that up. You want to pick that up and the stitch behind it. So it's like a whole V. You, you kind of stab into two loops there. And this gives you a nice edge and pull that up, okay? And then the way back is like the same, the way back on the first row, pull through one, and then pull through two the rest of the way through. Gosh, this hook is so long. <laughs> I'm having a hard time working over the table like this. Normally I would sit back to do this. Okay, so we've finished two rows. You'll see the first row you can't see through. The second row looks like a ladder because we, it's not really finished until we work back that way. And I'm going to show you one more thing that I forgot to show you on the first row. We don't go through this first horizontal line on the very edge. You'll see our loop is coming straight out of that, so we kind of already have a loop from that one. We start with the next one. 
and pick up the loops all the way across. And on the last one, we pick up the two edge loops. And then on the way back, we yarn over, pull through one, and yarn over and pull through two all of the rest of the way back. Whoops, that was three. Okay. And the last thing I want to show you is, this goes so quickly, I can show you the, <laughs> an entire craft here in just a short video. To bind off, you pick up stitches just like you, you're uh, doing a normal row, but pull it through the other loop. So you're left with only one loop after each stitch. Pull it up, pull it through. Stab, pull it up, pull it through. You can see I'm binding off the row. I'm, I'm actually finishing up this row, binding it off at the same time. And the last one, I'll go through two loops, bind it off, and then I can break the yarn. I can break the yarn and I'm finished with this. Now you'll see these stitches are perfect little squares. And that's why cross stitch works so well in these. And it's a nice smooth stitch. It reminds me of stockinette in, in knitting because it is just such a plain smooth stitch. And there I've shown you how to do an entire craft. That's how you work Tunisian crochet.